Hey guys, today I'm filming my Beauty Empties Hits and Misses number 21. If you guys have never seen one of my empties videos before, I'll have my playlist linked down below. And I like to film my empties every three months to make sure I have a decent amount of products to share with you, especially so I have makeup to share with you because I believe that's the most exciting part of an empties. Another thing I love doing in my empties is separating all of my products into categories that will be listed down below with the times that they start. I will also list and link all the individual products products to make everything more convenient for you guys because this is such a product heavy video and this is actually one of the smaller empties I've had in a really long time and I think that's because my most recent empties I had finished a ton of skincare products and then basically started with a brand new skincare routine so it's going to take me a while to get through all of those items but I am just going to jump right in with my body slash random products. I used up the Dove Dry Spray Antiperspirant. They come in a bunch of different versions. I I have the clear tone skin renew with these little pearls on it and they all have different scents. This one is my absolute favorite scent. I love this deodorant. It is really easy to spray on. It dries very quickly. It doesn't get white marks on your clothes. This really helps me to smell fresh and it helps keep me from sweating so much. This can be a little bit more expensive than a regular deodorant but I always check on coupons.com before I purchase one of these because oftentimes you can find coupons on there for a couple of dollars off this as well as a bunch of other drugstore hair skin body products they have coupons for razors hair dyes makeup shampoo and conditioner all kinds of things for a bunch of different brands as well as men's products so I always recommend you guys check out coupons.com because it cannot hurt to save a dollar or two here or there but this is absolute holy grail to me I go through one of these about every three months so I am definitely getting my one ease worth for sure and I have already repurchased it I used up two of the Equate Beauty 100% Acetone Nail Polish Remover. This is these six fluid ounce bottles. These cost about 90 cents at Walmart. I love getting the six fluid ounce size because I, a long time ago, bought this CVS Twist and Lock Pump Nail Polish Remover Bottle where literally there is a pump on the top you can put your cotton pad or cotton ball on and then you just pump it, the nail polish remover comes up and it's just so much easier to remove my polish that way because I cannot tell you how many times I've knocked over a bottle like this onto the floor and that is a six fluid ounce bottle so it fits perfectly in there and I love using acetone. I know that it can be very harsh on your nails but it works so well for me to get off all of my polishes super quickly and I used to go through one bottle every three months but now I'm going through two because I've been painting my nails twice a week and that's because in my choppy block series for this year which I'll have linked up above I am testing out a bunch of nail polishes as well so I am doing a different manicure about twice a week so I'm going through this twice as fast it's less than a dollar so I definitely don't mind but I will continue to repurchase these. My next nail product is the Julie G Jet Set Quick Dry Top Coat. I don't think I mentioned this last time but if I did please forgive me and this was an amazing top coat. It made my nails look super glossy. It dried really quickly and it also kept my nails from chipping for a very long amount of time. Julie G is very inexpensive. You can find these at most Rite Aids for around four or five dollars. I will definitely be repurchasing this. I didn't even realize how much I loved it until I moved on to my current top coat which is the Wet n Wild Hard as Ice and for me unfortunately my nails have been chipping a lot quicker with that top coat than they did with this one so I will be going back to this and there is a little bit of product in there and I have been putting polish thinner in this but it's just too thick and I'm not able to get a good amount of product in the brush. If I go over top of my polish and this is it fully coated it will just streak it and make it look like a mess so what I've been doing with the product that I have left is that if you guys have seen one of my project pan videos um here we go if you've seen a project pan video for some products I'll mark on it with a sharpie to show where my progress is and sharpie marks come off items really easily but if you want them to stay in place you take a little bit of clear polish you go right over top of the line. And then if you decide you want to remove the line for whatever reason, you can take some kind of cotton or tissue, put it into acetone and it'll rub right off. So just so you guys know that, but that's what I've been doing with this. I'm saving it until it's completely gone using this to mark project pan items. I don't like to use the same one that I'm currently using for my nails. I'm sure I could, but 
that's the way that I'm getting every little last bit out of this but anyway I definitely recommend this I was very impressed with how well it worked it was very comparable to my glisten and glow HK girl top coat and then my one random thing would be the cinema secrets makeup brush cleaner this is the two ounce bottle with the spray and this is an amazing spot cleaner for your brushes this has a very strong vanilla scent I've gotten used to it but it did really bother me at first now this gets all of the products out of your brushes, especially if you have a bunch of powder in your brushes, and it dries super duper quickly. So I can see this being a go-to product for makeup artists. This is something I usually just use with my eye brushes. I could use it with face brushes as well, but I just love it for eyes, especially if I'm using a brush with a brow pomade or a cream shadow, and I don't want it to dry and gunk up my bristles. This is amazing. And I have been savoring the last little bit, but I will be purchasing this during the VIB sale. And and I'm gonna get the eight ounce bottle that comes with a little cleansing tin because I think that can be a really useful product as well but it's only eight bucks in this small size and it lasts me a really long time they have a bunch of different sizes you can get it from Sephora highly recommend it next I only have two hair care products the first is the Garnier Nutrice nourishing conditioner and this came with my Garnier Nutrice nourishing color cream which is my go-to hair dye and this is the conditioner that comes along with it this is an amazing amazing deep conditioner it makes my hair so soft it is so easy to brush my hair out afterwards and this little bottle actually lasts me a long time and I really appreciate that they put it in a bottle because most hair dyes they'll put the conditioner in a foil packet which is just so annoying to use in the shower and this is fantastic I wish they sold this as an individual product because it is one of the best conditioners I've ever used so if you ever buy their hair dye kits make sure you use the conditioner completely up because it's that amazing the other hair product I finished was a travel size of the Clorane dry shampoo with oat milk. They do have this one as well as one with nettle oil, which is supposed to be for oily roots. And then they have tinted versions as well. I've tried the one with nettle, which you think would be amazing for me because I do have very oily roots. It did nothing and it was disgusting to me. It made my hair feel worse. So I did not have high expectations for this. This blew me away. It soaked up every little bit of oil in my roots and I have a ton. My hair looked super fresh and clean. It had a nice light scent to it. This was amazing and I do also love the dry bar dry shampoo. That one soaks up oil probably just as well but the fragrance in that one is so overpowering I cannot handle it. And then I love my suave dry shampoo. It's super inexpensive and it works well but it doesn't soak up oil as good as this one does. And I know from time to time that Ulta will have sales on these because I think this is like $20 for the full size bottle which I will not be paying for but if there are good sales on these I will pick it up because it is is absolutely incredible. Next I have my skincare products. As I said, I don't have a ton here because I had finished up so many in my last empties. I have two different makeup remover wipes. The first would be, you guessed it, my Neutrogena makeup remover wipes, the classic ones in the blue packaging. Those are so amazing because they completely remove all of my face makeup and eye makeup with just one wipe. And you guys know how much makeup I wear. And it does not burn my eyes. And Every other makeup remover wipe I've tried, either it does not remove my makeup well enough or it really burns my eyes. So those are amazing. I think they're totally worth the money. I get the big pack from Costco, which is a great way to save on those wipes. You get four of the big packs and two of the travel packs. Highly recommend and I will continue to repurchase. Then I had received some wipes from Derma E. These are their hydrating facial wipes. And I tried using these to remove makeup because they do say that they can be used for that. But honestly, I think these would probably be best as literally a facial wipe. When you don't have any makeup on, maybe you just got back from the gym and you're feeling really gross and sweaty and you want to feel nice and clean and fresh, that would be awesome for that. But for removing makeup, no. And there's something about the texture of these wipes. It's not firm enough to actually like get in there and clean your skin. Also, these were not moist enough so I really had a hard time getting off my makeup because they felt so freaking dry and just because of the texture of the wipes I I just had a really hard time I don't think these would be good for removing makeup for removing swatches even I think you'd have to scrub your skin right off and then I finished one more product from Derma E this is their radiance toner with glycolic acid in Roebo's I don't know how to say it this is a six fluid ounce bottle it took me a while to get through 
Derma E is a great skincare line for people that have sensitive skin. This did a great job of toning my skin, making me feel very fresh. And usually what I do is wash my skin pretty good at night, but in the morning, I don't really need to cleanse. I've got a little bit of oil that produced overnight, so then I'll just take some toner on a cotton round and wipe it off, and then my skin feels very fresh, and I'll go in with serums and moisturizers and the rest of my skincare routine, and that works really well for me. So I do think that this is a very nice product. Also, a lot of times when I wake up in the morning, I have a little bit of eye makeup that has traveled below my eyes that somehow was left over from the night before, and after I've already wiped off my face, with my toner and a little cotton pad, then I just take what's left and go right under my eyes to clean it up. Works perfectly. And currently I'm using a Neutrogena toner that is my holy grail. But I tried wiping a little bit under my eye and I was like, like it was way too strong and burned a little bit. So this, I'm not gonna say rub it on your eyes, but when I used it to wipe a little makeup under my eye, it worked perfectly for that. So I thought this was a really nice product. I don't know if I repurchased because I do like the Neutrogena more because it stings a little bit. So I feel like it's doing something for my very oily, acne prone skin. There's also something kind of strange that I don't know if you guys can notice. If I would go a couple days without using this toner, I would notice it's like, a little bit of the liquid is like crystallizing or something. I don't think there's anything bad about it. It's probably just because it's a more natural product, but I just thought that was kind of interesting. I just brush it off and go about my day. Like it's not a big deal, but I just thought that was interesting and wanted to know if you guys knew anything about that. And then I have a bunch of skincare samples. So I'm currently doing a rolling project 10 PM sample edition. I'll have my playlist linked up here and I'm not going to be reviewing all those samples for you guys. I'm only going to be mentioning in my empties the items that are really standing out to me that I wanted to share with you. So I do have one deluxe sample of the Garnier Skin Active Moisture Balm, the antioxidant super moisturizer. This was incredible. I do have another of these and I'm excited to use. This reminds me of a good drugstore alternative to the Belief True Cream Aqua Balm. It isn't quite as good, but it is up there. I love that it is a gel consistency. It gives my oily skin the perfect amount of moisture for the daytime. This is something that I would definitely buy. I was absolutely impressed with that and I would definitely recommend it if you have my skin type. Then I've got some foil packet samples. This is the number seven Lift and Luminate Triple Action Serum and I love the scent of this and I love the consistency. I still don't quite understand the purpose of a serum. I guess it's supposed to give you more moisture and that was something I used during the day and I didn't find that it made me too moisturized or oily and I just love the way that it felt on my skin which is why I think I would actually purchase that in the future if I can get it on sale because I do think that is decently pricey for a drugstore skincare product. Then I had a whole bunch of moisturizer samples that I tried out and I wanted to just talk about the differences I found in them. So I have two from Ole Hendrickson. One is the Counterbalance Oil Control Hydrator and the other is the Sheer Transformation Perfecting Moisturizer. Now both of these give the perfect amount of moisture for my oily skin during the daytime. However, I noticed that with the Counterbalance, this was a little more mattifying, I guess, and I found that this did not mesh well with all primers, and it made some of my primers ball up on my skin, but when I use the Sheer Transformation, which like I said, gives me the exact same amount of moisture, I did not have problems with my primer balling up on my skin. So I don't think either of these are necessarily worth the money because I love that Garnier just as much. But if I had to pick one of these, I would pick the Sheer Transformation. Then I also had finished two little foil samples of the Sephora Instant Moisture Plus Cream with Hyaluronic Acid. This was a fantastic nighttime moisturizer. I'm not too picky with night moisturizers, but I want them to be a little bit more hydrating. And I don't mind if I'm greasy overnight, but it didn't feel greasy. It sunk into my skin, but I felt very moisturized. So I was actually really impressed with that and I would consider buying that one. And lastly, we have all the makeup I was able to finish off. And this is actually quite a bit. And I am going to show you all the products, let you know whether I would repurchase them or not. But if you would like more information, check out my most recent makeup use up update. I'll have that linked up here in those videos is where I give more in-depth reviews on makeup empties. And I don't want to be too repetitive, but I also don't want to leave makeup empties out of these videos because then these probably wouldn't be as interesting either. So if you don't want all the rambly bits, you can watch this. If you want more info, you can watch the Makeup Use Up update. So I had finished two deluxe size face primers. The first was the Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. I was really surprised how much I enjoy this. It did feel like a nice 
added layer of moisture on my skin and I did like it but not enough to buy it and I think it's just because it's not the most compatible with my skin type. Then I had the MAC Prep and Prime Natural Radiance Primer in Radiant Yellow. Supposed to have a yellow tint but when you start blending it on your skin it's clear and this was a moisturizing primer but it didn't moisturize as well as a Smashbox. So if I had to choose one of these I would pick the Smashbox. Smash but I wouldn't buy either of them. Then I had finished the Maybelline Dream Cushion Foundation in 110 Porcelain. I really liked this. It did give a decent amount of coverage for being a cushion foundation. I liked the finish. Wasn't the most long lasting on my oily skin. But the real negative here is that this is very expensive. You only get half a fluid ounce and I use this up entirely in a month. I'm not paying freaking $15 to use a foundation in a month. I loved the formula actually, amazing for the winter, but I wouldn't purchase it because of that reason. Then I finished two concealers, the NYX HD concealer in the shade number one porcelain. This oxidizes on me and I don't have a good shade, so I would not repurchase it. Then I finished the Maybelline Fit Me concealer in 15 Fair. Now they have an even lighter shade, which is great. This does not give enough coverage for me and it's a little too dewy, so I would not repurchase that. Then I finished a whole mess of powders. I had a little deluxe sample size of the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder. This is one of the best powders I've ever tried for setting my under eyes. Even though it is pricey, I would repurchase this. Finish the Dermablend Translucent Loose Setting Powder. This did a fine job, but for me, loose powders for all over the face are so standard and basic. I wouldn't want to actually invest in one from a high-end brand. Laura Mercier for your under eyes is different, but it was good, but I just can't justify it for the price. And then I finished the Rimmel Stay Matte Press Powder in Transparent. My Holy Grail Touch Up Powder, absolutely incredible. And I did already repurchase this. I also do use that to set my face sometimes, just in my extra oily areas, but I love it best as a touch up powder. I also finished the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder in the shade number five, Fair. Holy Grail to me, it sets my face so well, gives a good amount of coverage. It's a perfect color for me and it does help keep me matte. I am so obsessed with that. Then I had finished two eyebrow pencils I was using in combination. The NYX Microbrow in the shade Taupe and the Benefit Goof Proof in the shade number two. I love the NYX for underlining my brows, lining the top, filling in the tail, drawing on the front, and then I'll use the Goof Proof to fill in the center. And using these two together, they both lasted me months and months and months, which is incredible. The benefit is absolutely worth the money considering how long it takes me to use it up. And this is like an angled brow pencil, which works well for me because I have fuller brows. And I did repurchase both of these already. And I would continue to buy taupe in this, but I think I would choose to buy shade number one in the benefit. But both of these are holy grail to me. Definitely will repurchase. I was able to finish up three eyeshadows. The first is from the Anastasia Tamana palette. This is the shade Fresh. It was a light peachy pink tone matte cream color. I just use this to set my eye primer. I really enjoyed that, but it's not something I would love enough to repurchase. If I need a single form of a matte cream shadow, I'll get Wet n Wild Brulee, but I was happy to have that used up. I also finished up two ColourPop Super Shock shadows. I finished them in a project pan. I have the shade Lala, which is an ultra metallic finish. It is a beautiful rose gold. And I also finished the shade Weenie, which is a pearlized finish. This was also rose gold. You definitely don't need them both, but there are differences. Weenie is more on the rosy side, while Lala is more on the gold side. Both of these are also similar to Amaze, which I used up at the very end of last year. I definitely don't need all three. I just need to figure out which of the three I want to repurchase, but I have a lot of other rose gold shadows in my collection, so I don't need to buy them yet, but these are absolutely amazing. My last three items are lip products. The first is the Jack Black The Stick Natural Lip Balm. This didn't hydrate my lips enough. It's a little bit too thick and it is pretty pricey, so I prefer the EOS over this one and I won't repurchase it. Then I finished two mini Buxom Full On Lip Polishes in 
Sophia, which was a light pink, and Dolly, which was a mauve color. I love the Buxom Gloss formulas. These are beautiful shades, but I don't think I'll repurchase them. I have a mini of Dolly in the Lip Cream formula, which I like a little bit better, but this is my number one high-end lip gloss formula. A little sticky, but I love the cooling sensation, and they make my lips look really full, and I felt so accomplished to finish up two Super Shocks and two mini lip glosses, because two of these make up one full-size gloss. So guys, that was my empties number 21. I would love to know what products you've finished up recently and I would love to know your thoughts on these products in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe and I'll talk to you soon. Bye guys.